Okay, so the next chapter we're going to discuss is the tissue level of organization. So now that we've understand and discussed in detail cells, we're going to examine tissues. Tissues are groups of cells that are similar in structure and function. And there's different types of tissue that we will examine. Epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and nerve tissue. For each of the tissue types that we will examine along with the subtypes, you should be able to identify the types and arrangement of the cells, whether there's an intracellular matrix, so if it's absent or present, and its composition, and the function and body locations of the various tissues. Now, histology studies tissues, just like cytology is the study of cells. And we will study tissues both in lecture and in lab. And in lab, you will use a compound light microscope to examine tissues in further detail. Now, there's three types of embryonic germ layers from which all adult tissues are derived. Endoderm, which gives rise to the functional linings of the digestive and respiratory tracts, as well as to the associated accessory glands and organs, like your liver, stomach, and pancreas. Mesoderm, which gives rise to the components of the skeletal, musculature, muscular, and circulatory systems. And ectoderm which gives rise to the epidermis of the skin and all of the components of the nervous system. Now there is various types of cell junctions that connect tissues together. There is tight junctions, gap junctions, and anchoring junctions. And each of these junctions might have different types of tissue or cell-to-cell -cell connections possibly allowing for either no um, substances to pass through or they might allow for communication between tissues and cells like gap junctions which are found in cardiovascular tissue for example. So let's start with epithelial tissue. Now, epithelial tissue is found in rows, sheets, or tubes composed of squamous, cuboidal, or columnar cells, forms the outer skin, as we've already discussed, and protects, secretes, and absorbs. Now, there is some particular characteristics of epithelial tissue that you must be familiar with. Epithelial tissue is avascular, meaning it has no blood vessels, so the cells are fed by the underlying connective tissue blood vessels. It is um, regenerative mitotic, it's constantly replaced from the basal layer or basement membrane of connective tissue. It is innervated. It's full of nerves. It has a variety of cell-to-cell -cell connections. And it also has polarity, meaning it has an apical and a basal surface. The apical surface may bear microvilli, is composed of closely packed cells, and the apical surface can also have cilia, like in the lining of the trachea. And you can see that epithelial tissue can be arranged in different forms. It can either be simple, composed of one cell layer, stratified, composed of multiple cell layers, or pseudostratified, where the cells are arranged in various 
groupings with the nucleus not in the center of the cell but found in various locations throughout the cell. So let's examine the different types of epithelial tissue starting with columnar. And the other thing to think about with epithelial tissue is the classification is going to be based on the number of cell layers. Again, simple, one cell layer, stratified, multiple cell layers. So squamous. Squamous is thin, flat, scale-like cells with a centralized nucleus. And this would be found in columnar. So you can have um, simple columnar, simple squamous, or simple cuboidal. Cuboidal is a three-dimensional square, commonly found in the kidney. Squamous is commonly found in the cheek, lungs, and walls of capillaries. Columnar is taller than they are wide with the nucleus low in the cell. This type of epithelial cell can be ciliated or non-ciliated and it's found in the digestive and respiratory systems. Now one thing to keep in mind, if epithelial tissue is stratified, it's named according to the apical layer of cells. Stratified epithelium is shown here. And again, you can have squamous, cuboidal, and columnar. Stratified squamous epithelium is composed of several cell layers. The basal cells are cuboidal or columnar and metabolically active. The surface cells are flattened squamous, hence the name. Stratified squamous functions to protect underlying tissues in areas of the body that are subject to abrasion. There is two types, keratinized and non-keratinized. Keratinized, the surface cells are full of keratin and dead. Non-keratinized type, you might find in the esophagus, mouth, or vagina. The keratinized variety forms the epidermis of the skin. Cuboidal, stratified cuboidal, is very rare in the body. It's found in some sweat and mammary glands, and it's typically two cell layers thick. Stratified columnar, also has a limited distribution in the body with small amounts found in the pharynx, some glandular ducts, and the male urethra. Now there is additional types of epithelial tissue like pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium and it's a single layer of cells with differing heights some not stretching to the free surface, the nuclei are seen at different levels, and it may contain mucus secreting cells, which are goblet cells. It functions in secretion, particularly of mucus, and propulsion of mucus via ciliary action. Location, the non-ciliated type might be in males sperm carrying ducts and ducts of large glands. The ciliated type might be found in the trachea and most of the upper respiratory tract. Transitional epithelium resembles both stratified squamous and stratified cuboidal. The basal cells are generally cuboidal or columnar and the surface cells are dome-shaped or squamous-like, depending on the degree of organ stretch. Transitional epithelium functions 
because it stretches readily and permits distension of, for example, your urinary organs. And it's found lining the ureters, urinary bladder, and part of the urethra. Now there's also glandular epithelium. A gland is one or more cells that makes and secretes an aqueous fluid. And they're classified by the site of product release and the relative number of cells that form the gland. Now the site of product release can either be endocrine or exocrine. Endocrine is released into the interstitial fluid and you will talk about endocrine glands in more detail in ANP2, particularly when you study the endocrine system. The exocrine glands are more numerous than endocrine glands and they secrete their products into ducts or the secretions can be released onto body surfaces like the skin. Examples would include mucus, sweat, oil, and salivary glands. There's also different modes of secretion, merocrine and holocrine. Merocrine, the products are secreted by exocytosis, like the pancreas, sweat, and salivary glands. Holocrine, the products are secreted by the rupture of the glands, like the sebaceous glands. And then apocrine, you have cytoplasmic loss of the gland, and those would be mammary glands as an example. Now glands may also be unicellular or multicellular. Multicellular exocrine glands are composed of a duct and a secretory unit. The duct type can be simple or compound and they can have different types of structures of their secretory units like tubular, alveolar, or tubulo-alveolar. So here are some examples of the different types of glandular epithelium and the secretions, modes of secretions that we just discussed. And you can see whether it's a small portion pinched off via a secretory vessel, vesicle, or a portion, or the whole cell ruptures and dies. Now, connective tissue is the next type of tissue. Connective tissue is very abundant and widely distributed. And there's four classes that we will go over. Connective tissue proper, cartilage, bone tissue, and blood. Connective tissue has a matrix, and the matrix can contain fibers, elastin, which are yellow and allow for stretch, collagen, which are white and provide strength, and reticular, which is mesh-like and consists of networks. The matrix can also contain a ground substance or glue. And here's the different types of connective tissue. Connective tissue proper, which can be further subdivided into loose or dense, fluid connective tissue, and supporting connective tissue. The major functions of connective tissue are binding and support, protection, insulation, and transportation. And connective tissues have varying degrees of vascularity and their cells are separated by a non-living extracellular matrix. That is the ground substance and fibers. Mesochyme is embryonic connective tissue which gives rise to all other connective tissue types. Now, the different types of connective tissue are shown here. Loose connective tissue and dense connective tissue are two forms of connective tissue proper. Loose connective tissue consists of areolar, adipose, and reticular. Dense connective tissue 
consist of dense regular, dense irregular, and elastic. Areolar connective tissue is very abundant in the body. It has a gel-like matrix with all three fiber types. It contains cells, fibroblasts, macrophages, mast cells, and some white blood cells. It functions to wrap and cushion organs. And also, because of its macrophage, it can phag phagocytize bacteria. So it plays an important role in inflammation. It's located, widely distributed under the epithelia of the body, and found packaging and surrounding organs and capillaries. Adipose tissue, the matrix is uh, similar to areolar but very sparse. Closely packed cells called adipocytes or fat cells. It functions to provide reserves of food fuel, insulates against heat loss, and supports and protects organs. It's located in the skin in the hypodermis around kidneys and eyeballs within your abdomen and in breasts. Reticular tissue consists of a network of reticular fibers in a loose ground substance and the fibers function to form a soft internal skeleton that supports other cell types. It's located in lymph organs, lymph nodes, bone marrow, and spleen. Dense regular connective tissue has primarily parallel collagen fibers, a few elastic fibers, and the major cell type is the fibroblast. It attaches muscles to bones or to muscles, bones to bones, and can withstand great tensile stress when pulling force is applied in one direction. It's located in tendons and most ligaments. Dense irregular connective tissue has an irregularly arranged collagen fibers and some elastic fibers, and the major cell type is the fibroblast. It functions to withstand tension exerted in many directions and provides structural strength. It's found in fibrous capsules of organs and joints, dermis of the skin, and submucosa of the digestive tract. Blood is a type of liquid connective tissue, and the cells include both red and white blood cells. The matrix is a plasma liquid, and it functions to transport respiratory gases, nutrients, waste, and other substances. And you will study blood and lymph in more detail in ANP2. Supporting connective tissue consists of cartilage and bone. There's three types of cartilage, hyaline, elastic, and fibrocartilage. Cartilage contains chondrocyte cells. These are cells that sit in small pools called lacunae, and they tend to have a fried egg appearance. The matrix is semi-solid but flexible. Hyaline cartilage is found in the fetal skeleton, and in the adult, it forms part of the ribs, ends of long bones, larynx, and trachea. It functions to support and reinforce and has resilient cushioning properties while resisting compressive stress. Elastic cartilage is similar to hyaline cartilage, but has more elastic fibers in its matrix. It's flexible. It functions to maintain the shape of a structure while allowing great flexibility. And its location is the external ear and the epiglottis. Fibro fibrocartilage, the matrix, is similar 
but uh, similar to, but less than that, in hyaline cartilage, you have thick cartilage collagen fibers that predominate. And it's found in the discs of vertebrae, pads of knees, and pubic joint. It functions to provide tensile strength with the ability to absorb compressive shock. Bone is a fairly rigid type of connective tissue with some bend ability. It has a hard, calcified matrix containing many collagen fibers. The mature bone cells are osteocytes which reside in the lacunae. Bone is also very well vascularized. Bone functions in support and protection by enclosing the soft, protecting the organs beneath it, providing a lever for the muscles to act on, storing calcium and other minerals and fat, and the marrow inside bones is the site for blood cell formation. Now there's different types of connective tissue cells, fibroblast cells, which synthesize connective tissue fibers, adipocytes, which store lipids, and blood cells. Cells that are mitotically active and secretory generally end in blasts, so fibroblasts, for example. Mature cells end in sites, like osteocytes or chondrocytes osteocytes in bone and chondrocytes in cartilage. And again, the matrix of connective tissue can consist of the three fiber types as shown here. Collagen, reticular, and elastic. And here's the different types of connective tissue that we just went through. Again, for each, you should be able to identify a description of the tissue, its function, and body location. You should also know the cells and the matrix, intracellular matrix, whether it is absent or present, and also its composition. So you can see areolar connective tissue with the adipocyte cells, the mature cell, um, adipose tissue with the adipocyte cells, reticular with the reticular fibers, dense connective tissue, dense regular, a regular repeating pattern of collagen fibers, dense irregular, you see that we have an irregular repeating pattern of collagen fibers, both containing fibroblast nuclei, fibroblast cells, cartilage, hyaline, elastic, and fibrocartilage, hyaline, mostly collagen fibers, elastic, more elastic fibers, and fibrocartilage, rows of collagen. Fibrocartilage will have a wavy type of appearance when examined under the microscope. And remember, in cartilage, it is the chondrocytes, which is the mature cell that sits in the lacunae, that space or cavity. Bone, vascularized matrix of ground substance with calcium salts and collagen. And there's different types of bone that you will examine later on. Spongy bone, which has a trabeculae or lattice type network, and compact bone, which is a repeating pattern of osteons. The mature cell, again, with bone is the osteocyte, which sits in the lacunae. The periosteum surrounds it. Fluid connective tissue, both blood and lymph, which you will examine in more detail in a and 2 But again, there is a definite cell type, and the matrix is liquid in this case. And muscle tissue. 
Muscle tissue also contains specialized cells, but it has different types of protein microfilaments like actin, myosin, troponin, and tropomyosin that you will study later on. Skeletal muscle has cylindrical cells, and the striations that you see in skeletal muscle are alternating dark and light striped bands of protein. Skeletal muscle is multinucleated, and it functions in voluntary movement, locomotion, facial expression, voluntary control. Examples might be your triceps, biceps, quadriceps. Smooth muscle has tapered cells with a large central nucleus, no striations, and is found in the walls of hollow organs such as the stomach, uterus, and blood vessel walls. Smooth muscle functions to propel substances or objects along internal passageways. And again, it's under involuntary control, mostly found in the walls of hollow organs. Cardiac muscle is located in the atria and ventricles and walls of the large vessels of the heart. It contains branch cells, striations, one central nucleus per cell, it also contains intercalated discs, which are a thickening of the cell membrane and allows for communication between the cells. Cardiac muscle functions to, as it contracts to propel blood into the circulation and is under involuntary control. Nervous tissue, nervous tissue consists of neurons and neuroglial cells. Neurons are highly specialized cells with a cell body which contains a nucleus, organelles, and produces neurotransmitters and cell membrane extensions called axons and dendrites which conduct nervous impulses. We will study the nervous system later on in the course. Neuroglial cells are small packed cells in between neurons for support and nourishment of neurons and also can function to clean up cellular debris or dead cells. Nervous tissue is found in both your central and peripheral nervous system. And again, we will study it in more detail later, including the various types of neuroglial cells, some of which are shown here, like the microglial cell and oligodendrocyte. So for each of the different tissue types, again, make sure you know the function, location, and description, including the fibers, cell type, and matrix, whether it's present or absent, and what it consists of. This concludes our look at the tissue level of organization.